Hey everybody, welcome back to another one of my videos. In today's video, I'm gonna cover setting up a model on your MZ32 or MZ16, as they are pretty much the same radio, except for a few changes. I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of things from basically creating the model, showing you how to change the name, binding it, setting up your servos, going through phases, phase setups, setting up some controls and mapping them to your phases. Uh, talk about what dual rates and expo and how they're impacted by phases. Talk about throttle cut, go into a little bit of flaps, not a big lot, but some, and then timers. And then finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about notifications setup. So having said all of that, let's jump right into creating a model. It is really very easy. You just go to the main menu by just tapping the menu button. In your base menu, you'll have model list. This will list all the models you have. If a radio is new, you'll obviously have nothing here. You'll have a plus button, but uh, since I have a lot of models already, we'll tap on the number column. As soon as I do that, I get a submenu in the bottom. And what you need to do with that is tap the plus button and this will bring up a naming dialog. Now you can name your model. It is a good thing to give it a pretty good descriptive name if you're like me and next year I fly one of my 30 planes. I can't remember all of them quite by name. Um, but if you have a proper description in here, then you know which one it is. In this case, well, I'm only doing a test, so I'm just gonna put in test. And it's interesting to note that you can use spaces in here. You can use all kinds of characters so I'm just gonna do test number four if you like but you can go up to 16 characters in here so go away type all the name that you like to describe your model as the next screen we presented with is setting up the model type what does this thing look like so uh, you have a number of options here you can choose between airplanes helicopters multicopters cars and boats I'm just going to concentrate on an airplane at this point in time, but most of the things I'm going to talk about can going to apply to pretty much anything you do here. Maybe not so much car, car boats, but the rest of them. Okay, you can change that. Next thing you want to do is assign the servos for your wings. What does that look like? Do you have just one aileron, in other words, one servo that controls both, si both ailerons and they're mechanically linked, or do you have uh, one flap, one, one aileron, also mechanically linked. E. Um, two ailerons, which means two separate servos. Two ailerons, one flap, or two flaps, two ailerons, which is what I'm going to select here for, uh, for this demo. Of course, you can go all the way up to four ailerons and four flaps if that is what you, uh, whoops, if that is what you have on your plane. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to set up, I'm going to set up two ailerons and two flaps here. Next thing we look at tail types. Um, same thing applies here. You have normal tail, which is one servo for elevator, one servo for rudder, or you have a V tail, typically on sailplanes, etc. you'll have a V tail and no rudder, or you can have two elevators, servos and one rudder, servos of three servos in that configuration. I'm gonna leave it a normal here for my purposes. Note that you have this little red line in the bottom here. That red line tells you there is more stuff. You can scroll to see more information. And this is applies to both horizontal and vertical orientation. So if you see that little red line anywhere on a screen, you know you can scroll and see more stuff. You can change the direction of your throttle so the throttle stick could be forward to be minimized or to the rear to be have minimum throttle. I'm not going to touch that. We're going to leave it where it is. You can choose how many engines you have on this craft. You can choose up to four engines. In this case, I only have the one, so we'll leave. <laughs> we only have the one, so we'll leave it at one. Um, the The beauty about choosing here is that the radio automatically links that one throttle control your stick to all of your your motors automatically, they'll have channels mapped to automatically for that. And the stick is set up right up front. Very handy to have, except if you're doing a uh, traction bot with split tracks, 
then you want to use two separate sticks or two separate inputs etc and you don't want to use the setting because that won't allow you to do that anyway last option on this page is mode selection you can choose what kind of mode you're going to fly your radio in i fly mode 2 i'm going to leave that in mode 2 and that's it so now we're ready to say create and apply my default model and that's all there is to it of course at this point in time it does nothing until i go to the next stage which is connecting my receiver to the radio before i move on i get this question a lot and i thought i'd quickly cover the gear as well and uh, the question comes and says how do i rename my model you can't do it here if i go and click here on that number button then you'll notice there's no way for me to to, to change the name here what you need to do is go back to your base menu go to model types and here you can go and change the the name and of course you can now also go in and change the setup that you have make sure that if you change this here and you've already made significant set, uh, changes on on your model you may wipe some of them out because if you go from a plane to a helicopter or a quadcopter, some of those settings won't apply. And if you change it back, they'll be wiped out. Just be aware of that. Now, don't play around with it once you start set up, setting up your model. Go and create a test model to play with. Just a little FYI. Okay, moving on to the next item on my list. And that is binding your new model with your radio. So to do that, we go into the RF set menu and now you're presented with all these options and the right side you'll see I have the ability to bind up to four receivers at a time for those big scale models you need all those channels that up to 32 channels you can have a receiver in the left wing a receiver in the right wing a receiver in the nose and a receiver in the tail or whichever way you want to hook those up and you can assign them each their own channels and control them I'll quickly show you how that is done with two receivers, just as an FYI. But before we do any binding, I want to point out a couple of things here. First thing, bind group. You'll see that I have a bind group of A5 highlighted here. And what bind group does, it is that little handshake between your radio and your receiver on your model to say we are a link pair and we are unique. Now, if you set up two models, on A5, and you certainly can do that, you can, uh, or the same bind group there, you can certainly do that. Then they both will respond to the radio when you operate it. So it is possible for you to set up models and, and operate two receivers at the same time for two different models. That is desirable in certain cases. So say for instance, you fly competition, you have a backup plane set up exactly like your primary plane, and you wanna switch them out quickly, you don't have to switch model. You don't have to go and maintain two setups on your radio for these two two models. You can have the one setup and they fly both those those planes. Just remember to switch one off, right? You don't want both of them to go off in you at the same time. This is also very useful for uh, for flying little uh, whoops or little drones where you can just put them all in the same same group and so that uh, they all fly and respond to that one input that is bind group you have auto rf on and off here if if i set that to on then when i turn my radio on the rf output would be automatically turned on at that point in time so when i load a model or turn the radio on boom the radio will start transmitting right away i like to leave it off and if you do you'll get a little pop-up box saying hey do you want to turn on the rf and then you can say no yes or no depending on your situation and i like that much better so you can see right now it's turned off anyway all right we're going to go ahead and bind our model our first receiver and the way we do that is we turn on for my model and i'll turn on the battery there and then i hit the set button and at the same time i'm gonna punch that rx and uh, within a second or two, you will get this beep notification from model. And of course you can now see I get an R8 under the RX column there, which tells me I bound a uh, eight channel receiver. And so at this point in time, I should be able to 
to move some stuff. I want to show you how we can bind a second receiver. And I have one laying around somewhere. It's not hooked up to a model, but I can quickly do that. So I, you won't see that on the inset. I don't have that a camera, a third camera hooked up here. So on this GR18 that I have, the nine channel receiver, I have to hold in the set button as I turn on the power and then hit my bind button on my radio. And there we go. So now I have both a a channel and a nine channel receiver bound to my radio. You'll notice that this check mark on the right hand side jumped to the second receiver. And if I add a third and a fourth, it'll jump to that one um, by default. That check mark denotes the receiver that is your primary telemetry receiver. Yes, I'm gonna go and oh, while I just did the, that, you'll notice I just deselected telemetry altogether. If you ever run into a situation where you're on your main screen and you got RF out turned on, as you can see with the blue icon there, but your uh, signal strengths are set to gray little uh, with X's through them, you go, what the heck is going on? Well, that's because most likely you have managed to turn off your telemetry. And so the radio have no communications with your receivers. And just come back in here and turn it on. A little sidetrack there. All right, to to change the channels on your um, receiver that you just bound, because you obviously by default, this receiver will have exactly the channel, same channel map than the first receiver, and that's for redundancy purposes. You can use them redundantly like that. I am not going to use it that way. Uh, in this example, we're going to say, no, I want more channels. So the first one had eight channels. So we're going to say, whoops, let's try that again. I have nine channels and 10 channels, etc. I'm not gonna do all of them here, but I just done a, as an example, you can now set up this uh, receiver to have the extra channels that, uh, that you need to control your system with. So that's how easy that is. You know, now I can have eight plus nine. And so we got 17 channels and I can go and do what I need to do with my model. Quick other couple of notes while we're here in RF set. Range test, you have 99 seconds that you can do your range test with. So as soon as I hit this little button here, you can go, oh, yeah, and that's annoying. I'm just gonna turn that off. Um, and you go walk away, preferably 50 meters minimum to 100 meters at the max while still operating surfaces on your model. Pick your model up a little bit from the ground so it's not laying flat on the ground. If you cannot get 50 meters away from your model while in range test mode, you have a problem. Go back to your model, check your antennas, make sure they're properly routed away from carbon fiber or metal, all this kind of stuff that can interfere with RF signals and reroute them, stick them somewhere else, and then try your range test again to make sure that's right. That's the couple of things I just wanted to talk about RF set. All right, next we're gonna move on to setting up servos. Now that you have control on your radio and map to your model, you may have a couple of things. You might have servos moving in the wrong direction, all these kind of things. And the way to go in to change that is to go into the servo set menu. Once in the servo set menu, you'll notice that by default, the first four channels for a plane is already named correctly for you. You have your throttle, aileron, elevator, and uh, router set up, but, oops, since we also chose a second flap or a second aileron and two flaps with it, you'll see those were added as well as channels five, six, and seven on my eight channel receiver. You can go in here and you can rename any of these. And if you want to rename the stuff, this is the place to come and do it right in the beginning when you're ready. You can rename your servo. So if you have a choke servo or ignition servo when you fly gas motors, um, you want to come in here and set that up and name them properly so you know and you can find them easily in the future again. Remember what they are. Like I said, renaming, hit that little pencil button there and you can go and rename it. I'm not going to rename the flaps. They're good enough by default for me. The next, of course, is you can do servo reverse. So these little blue buttons that you have, it shows you I'm going uh, 
all by default in one direction here. Okay, so if you look at my model right now, you'll see if I move my right stick to the right, my right servo is going down, my right aileron is going down, and that is wrong because that'll make my plane go left. And the way that we fix that is we go and look at the ailerons and we say swap that aileron direction and whoops go to the aileron one and swap that so now i've swapped both those ailerons and you'll notice they are now going in the correct direction when i move my stick to the right so that's how easy it is to do several direction switches next we're going to go into our details menu and uh, what that allows you to do is tune your your servo this is for each and every servo independently so this doesn't affect a group of servos and what i mean with that if i make a change here for aileron this aileron i'm not going to affect the second aileron you have to go and do that one in the servo menu all of the changes that i make here is for that specific servo only and there's a good reason for it on this menu you can see i'm currently have balanced highlighted balance is where you have two servos two or more servos on one surface in other words i could have a very large model and i may have two or three servos driving that one aileron left aileron or right aileron surface and you want them to be tuned to be in harmony so that if i move that stick they move exactly in synchronization and don't fight each other. Of course, you want to make sure they're set up in the right direction at first, but also not all servos are made equal, which means that you can hear them hum and fight each other as you move the stick. And the way that you get me near it is you highlight a point where it is, listen to your servos, tune the servo till it stops fighting the other one, etc. go to the next point and next point and next point. And that way you can set up your servos to be completely balanced and working together in harmony. So that's what balance is. Next, travel. This is really something that you use in phases more than uh, anything. I don't normally change travel here at this point in time, but you can. You can set up your default travel. We're gonna do that later. Limit, however, is important. When you set up a servo for flaps, for instance, you're not gonna get full negative 100 to plus 100 travel on a servo so you want to make sure you come in here select those values and change them to a smaller value whatever that is that you have to stop to reach the mechanical limit you want to bring it just below mechanical limit and that's why you set that servo travel limit is what that is so very easy to do and then the last item in here in the details menu is trim actually this is sub trim when you and you'll notice there's just one setting here so if i change that that's not going to change anything because that is your zero around the middle your neutral trim for your servo to make sure if you set up your servo for the first time you want to make sure your ailerons are at neutral position or level with your wing all squared up that's what you do you come in here and set your sub trim up for that aileron and you can do it for each and every one of your servo sets that's connected up one more thing quickly to talk about here in in this and that is one that you don't see in the details and that's delay you can actually set up a uh, delay on a surface to say don't go that fast and so for flaps for instance this is important you don't want to snap them on you want to put in a little delay here and what this delay means it means that from the moment that i hit the the button or the switch to to move or activate that input for that servo to the time that it reached the designated point that you've put that switch or control at so it'll take if i had to say to four seconds it will take four seconds to move from neutral to the point that i'm telling it to move to or whatever value you set to in between so that's what delay will do and obviously very desirable for flaps so you can set that up here now that we've done that the next thing i want to talk about is phases phases allows you to set up very specific ways for your radio to operate your model now in the old days you could have said i want dual rates 
I, and you go and just set it up to a switch. What phases allow you to do is to set not only dual rates on that one switch, but you can couple all kinds of mixes, anything else that you can think of that, that impact that specific flight mode that you're in. And you can assign it just to a phase, which is controlled by one input. Very, very useful for you to, uh, to operate and set up your model. I'm going to show you just a, a very simple example here, but giving you an idea, phases that you can use in a plane, for instance, would be takeoff and landing, low rates, high rates, approach, stuff like that, right? Or if you have a quad, you would set up altitude mode, rate mode, autopilot mode, headless mode, um, return home mode. Those are examples that you do there. Or in helicopter, you'll have normal or aerobatic auto rotate or safe mode. You know, they now have that auto recover mode, if you would, where you flip switch and boom, your helicopter would go into <laughs> self right mode. So those are the kind of things that you, you set up and you can assign a switch to. You can have one switch to control three modes, for instance, or you can use multiple switches and combine them to make up certain phases. I certainly have done that with, uh, with my big quads. You can set up all kinds of things with multiple switches. Anyway, those are just some ideas. Now, before you do anything with phases, you have to go and define what they look like. And to do that, you go into the function tab on the right side and then select phase set. Now you'll see I already added a landing one here, but to add a phase is very easy. You just go in there and go hit plus, and then you can go and select from some default ones that's on here, all right? Or if you don't find the one that you're looking for, you can add in your own one. And the way to do that is to tap that dash, 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 and then select it and rename it to whatever you want to. Since we said landing, we can now do, let's say low rates, low rates, and we can add a higher rates. Okay, so now I have a, a bunch of phases defined. By themselves, they do absolutely nothing. To activate a phase, like I said, you have to assign some switch or control to it. And in this case, I'm just gonna use switch four on that side, and I'm gonna say there is that one. So now it's gone out to from normal to landing mode and and in cases like this you might want to have just that one on a very its own switch and then uh, you can go and say i want my low rates and high rates to be on another switch and so i'm going to go and use switch one for for that and to go into high rates we're going to go past that and there we go you'll notice that the moment I hit that switch, high rates is shown up there and then low rates. And then if I throw it all the way back, I'm in landing mode. The The further you get down, the less you're, the, the higher the priority of them. So anything that you select lower down on your list will take priority over anything further up on the list. So now I have some phases to, defined and I can go back. Oh, before I do that, we can actually say, hey, turn on voice for me here. And so when I operate, and remember I turned my volume down earlier. And you notice that I don't have any voices assigned to those because I those are manually added. And when you add those, you can actually go add them in here. You'll see some options here. Actually, I think I was on high rates there. All right, so there we go. Now, if I enable all of these, when I switch between, I get a voice notification on those switches. Very useful. Uh, you can flick it and it'll tell you I am now in this phase. So that's great. You've noticed that uh, I've added flaps, etc., but I have no control over what they, how to activate them at this point in time. And the reason for that is I, I really wanted to set up a phase first for that and, and just to show some example of what you can do with phases of controls and, and switches, etc. So to control your phases or set up certain switches for a control, you go into, well, control set. 
by default again you can see stick one stick two stick three stick four set up and we're not going to mess with those by default we do have the two flap ones right in the bottom here and those are the ones that we're interested in here now something that you can do here is you can say oh i'm just going to add a switch in here to operate my flaps and that's fine you can do that and you can just hit the the control entry next to flap and add it before i do it i i wanted to talk about how you can use phases to control things that you're doing you may not want to enable flaps during high rates or even low rates for that matter and so you can say i want to be, make this flap phase dependent this input switch for for the flap phase dependent and the way that you do that and when i hit the globe tap on it you'll see it changes to a list and and the list is basically tell you phases i'm switching between phases so now when I am on that, I can say, okay, I want to use a switch and we're going to use another three position switch here. Switch five to, to operate my flaps. And you get a couple of options here and we're going to talk about it a little bit further down the line too. You'll notice the type here has a two-way switch as we call that or an hourglass selection and that basically means that when my switch is in the middle that little middle piece there then or a neutral then everything is off and if i flip it to the back or flip it to the front i'll get an on condition and that's what a two-way switch means there or i can change that and make it a one-way type and that means that if it's all the way back, it's off. I move it to the middle, it's a little bit on. And if I move it all the way to the front, it's full on. That kind of thing, if you think want to think about it that way. You, of course, can also set a switch condition and say, I have a three position switch here and I want to use this position specifically for, for that switch. Any one of these are options, except with flaps, it's a little complicated. You don't want to go and just assign any one of these. So what we're going to do here for the moment is I'm going to leave it on this two-way switch and I'll show you why on my video here. When I click OK, you'll now see in my little insert, if I flip the switch, my flaps are, that's my center position on switch five. And you can see that here, there's that little yellow bar, center position all the way to the front, center position all the way to the back. And you can now see that my flaps go up in the one condition and down in the other one. And that might be desirable for a lot of people when you, for when you fly sailplanes. For instance, you want crow in the one direction, you want flaps in the other direction for landing. That'll allow you to do that kind of thing. There is a few other things that come into play in sailplanes, and I'm not gonna go into details and flaps in this video. Now that we have, that said, something I want to show you quickly here. If I now change my mode low to low rate, you'll know that notice that flap switch went away. Now, say I had flaps enabled down there and I switch my low, rate. low rates back on, you'll notice that that uh, flaps automatically jump back to neutral again. That's because in this mode, I don't have a switch assigned to it. So there's no input to drive that servo or the flap to tell it where it needs to be. Also in FYI, notice that even though I only have, when in landing mode, landing. a switch assigned to flap, I control both flap and flap two at the same time. So flap is my master and it'll control whatever else is, is mapped to it. Uh, while we're in control set, I do wanna talk about setting up rates, uh, low rates and high rates as well. I'm gonna go into rate, low, uh, low rates for the moment and then we can say, well, I want my elevator to be oops, phase dependent. So we'll hit the globe and now it's phase dependent. Then we can go into detail. And I can now go and change my elevator values to be something less. So I can say 70. Oh, I'm not going to go and play with specifics here, but close enough. And notice I can set both the top and the bottom ranges independently here. Um, so if you want them to be different, you can make them different. If you don't want them to be different, you can certainly make them the same. And now if I flip to 
high rates, you'll no notice that they jump back to 100. So at low rates, there's my setting for low rates. If I go to high rates, there we go, full throw 100 to 100. And that is how you, you use the phases to do rates. And that actually runs straight into my next discussion that I wanted to have, and that is on deal rates and expo. So you will see an entry here in the base menu for deal rates and expo. Here we are in the DR expo menu. I sh just showed you a way to do deal rates using phases and just doing it in the control set menu. You can of course come in here and say, do the same thing in, in this elevator setting here. QR is for rates, uh, manual rates, and I can set up four positions here, and you can use a three position switch to make three different positions here. I can set up switch two, for instance, here. So I have two positions there, and I can say in the off position, change this. So I can now, oops, <laughs> I'm in the high rates. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, phase is not going to impact us at all at this point in time. It is purely on that switch that I just assigned. And so you can see if I flip that switch, I go between those two selections and now I have dual rates. Don't mix them up because man, that would hurt. So just pick one and stick with it. Like I said, I recommend doing the phases one, but uh, feel free to do oops, whatever you want to do. Note that I can delete that switch off of that. And as soon as I do, of course, all of those changes I just make go away. Um, so that's deal rates. You can do that in this menu if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, the reason I wanted to come into the expo menu is to show you something else. And that is the d uh, <laughs> that is exponential. Exponential is a method to, to deaden or soften the control of your sticks around the center point. And it's really highly recommended on, on uh, planes, especially 3D planes. And uh, if you're learning very much so, because it'll take that twitchiness of your fingers away from the stick and not translate it directly into the plane and makes it a lot more easier to control your plane. So the way you do that is we're going to go into detail and we're going to make sure that for this, we turned on the two phases. So it's not in the globe mode and we go to value, select expo. I'm just going to do the expo the same for both negative and positive. And then you can drag this little yellow slider in the back. Oops. And don't go the wrong direction because now I'm making it worse. Right. Um, and let me demonstrate that. So I'm in ailerons here. And if I move this into negative, which for Taba is typically, then if I move my ailerons here, you can see that my output right off the side here will jump all the way to 30, 40, right on my first line there right but now i'm going to go to the other direction and you'll note that if i change that to 40 then and move my aileron at that same first line there i'm only at 13 now right so that gives you a lot less output for a, a larger movement of your stick and that means that you can uh, you can control your your model a lot smoother a lot better not be as jerky and uh, I very highly recommend it, especially on elevators. A lot of planes have some serious elevator issues, so you can make that elevator a lot, lot less reactive by using Expo. And of course, Expo, when used in this fashion, you can make them different between all your rates or your phases, if you would. So on high rates, I can leave it at a, a straight line and it's fully responsive around the middle and you got to be small movements, right? And then in low rates, we have Expo in there, and that's what I have on dual rates and Expo. Moving on to my next topic. In this section, we're going to talk about throttle cut. I think it's something that a lot more people are using these days, but there are still a few people who go, why do I need throttle cut on an electric plane? Well, it's simple, right? It's to stop you from accidentally activating your motor while doing something. You might just be picking up your plane and moving from your setup area to the flight line. And you don't want to accidentally bump throttle in the process of doing that and cut yourself. So it is a, it is a really useful tool. But of course, for gas and nitro, it is even more important. It's actually for the opposite reason. Once you landed the plane, you want to be able to 
kill the motor and I'll show you a way to do that from the throttle cut menu. All right, so as you noticed, I just went into the base menu, hit throttle cut, brings me right to this page, and there's a number of things that's in here. The only thing for the last week, guys, that's important is the control switch entry. So you just pick a switch that you want to operate, hit the button, operate the switch, and there you go. It gives you the option on off. In this case, I'm using switch eight. It's a top right corner in the US on MZ32s. And uh, you'll notice that now that the switch was selected, I have no output when I move my throttle stick. You can see throttle stick move up and down, no output, the green stays right. So I flip my switch to the on position, switch eight into on, and now you can then see I have movement. So there we go. That's all you need to do for electric planes to for that to work. Great. Now, for those guys with gas planes, this part is the interesting one for you. The rest of the guys can probably skip on forward. These little uh, digital trims, you can't do like you did in the old days, just slide the slider for the trim all the way down and, and kill the motor that way. The way to do it here is to set it up in your menu. First, you choose a trigger and the trigger is just a point below which you will activate the cutoff and that's the second one on this side and in this case I'm gonna say when I move my oops let's try that again when I move that yellow line or my throttle all the way to, to hmm, just for visualization effect there we go 80 so the idea here would be that as soon as I move my throttle past that yellow triangle to to the throttle minimum, then my throttle cutoff function will kick in. And you couldn't see that at this point in time because I didn't really have a setting in here. Um, so if I go and change my throttle cutoff, and it should typically be something bigger, or in this case, I guess the wrong way around if you think about it, it should be further negative than uh, 100. Otherwise, you would have killed your uh, engine anyway by just normally operating your throttle. So typically you'll get to 125 or something like that. And when you hit that, your uh, carburetor will close completely and your engine will starve and of course it'll shut off. So let me show you how that works. So now I have my throttle, I fly, I'm quite happy. Nothing happens, you can even see that it doesn't cut off there. And the reason it doesn't cut off is you have to make that decision and say, okay, I want my motor to turn off. And so you're gonna flip switch eight, you'll see that little yellow line, and it's to my cutoff position. And now, when I move my throttle past that little yellow triangle, you could see the green line just jumped all the way to my setting that is in cutoff, that 123. So uh, that really is all there is to the throttle cut menu, guys. Hopefully that helped a few of you out there. Moving on, next section, we're gonna talk about flaps. I am not gonna go into absolute detail here. There is way too much to talk about flaps. Actually, I'm thinking of making a separate video just to go into all the things that you can do and how you manage it with flaps. In this one, I'm just gonna cover absolute basic flaps going setting it from neutral to down and a little bit more down um, between low and high rates. And, or you could have thought about an approach and landing, whichever way. I'm just gonna show you some options and to, to operate this. To do that, first thing obviously is we gotta go, or maybe not so obviously, go make sure that we have a proper switch selected to my flaps. That switch is what's gonna determine how your flaps actually move in the end of the day. In this case, I have switch five selected and uh, currently it's set to one way. And the reason that is important, when I turn on my insert here quickly, you can uh, look at the plane, my model plane. And on a one way selection, if I operate the switch, you'll see that if my uh, switch is all the way to one position, my flaps are neutral or off. If I move the switch to the next position or the middle position, the flaps move slightly, and I move it all the way to the next position, and they move a little bit more. And this is a typical use for flaps. 
typically between approach and landing you can do that set it up so that's the effect of the switch i have on it now you go okay so how do i control that mount that i've moved there well that is all done in the wing set menu the wing set menu is under function wing set there we go and now you'll see a new menu that give you a number of other things. I'm not going to go into all the other stuff that's here. Um, like I said, I can do a whole video just on the stuff that's in here. We're going to talk about flap rates. And so we select flap rate and you tap the plane. And this will take you into the actual adjustment section for it. And remember that switch that I said? Notice how that yellow line only goes from neutral to 25 or to 50 and then to 100. So that's that's the movement that you get. And so you can adjust the rate that that moves since I'm on the positive side. So I can do that. Um, now, you can already see a problem here, right? That means that when I operate my flaps and you can still see that on the insert. Yeah, I have a lot smaller movements now and I can make that even smaller if I wanted to. Right, making that 15%. So now there's hardly any, any movement on my flaps. But whatever change I make here affects both switch positions. And that may not be ideal for what you have in mind. You might want to have a dual rate setting on there that you want a lot more on the one and a lot more on the other one. For that, we need to do a whole different setup. And like I said, I'm going to have to do a video to set up to show you all these options and doing it. Now, if we go back to our configuration in the control set, go to our flap switch, change that flap switch to a two-way, you immediately see my flap just went jump right up to the top. Okay, so that's what you expect it to do. And we go back to function, wing set, rate, and we can select that. Now you can see if I operated rate A here and made that do this, this would affect the camber then in effect if you want. I can set that where my central position would be neutral. Oops, and if I of course use the right switch where my central position would be neutral. The flap is a neutral position. If I pull it towards me, I go into camber or brakes, depending on what your setup is, and then flaps down. And so that's that's the easy way to go and do basic flap setup. There's all kinds of really complicated ways to that you might want to adjust your flaps in, and I'll do a separate video just to control those kind of things. But for now, this is how you manage flaps. I think while I'm here, I quickly am just going to touch on on aileron rates and aileron to flaps because they are important as far as flaps go as well. Maybe not the aileron rate so much, but the aileron to flap for sure. Aileron to flap. This one is an interesting one because if you do have a, uh, a a plane that have a fair amount of flap versus ailerons then you might want, want to be able to use the flaps in conjunction with your ailerons so that you get crisper turns, better rolls, those kind of things. And the way that you apply that is you're going to go in here, tap on that, and then just add a rate in here. And, and of course, you need need to make sure that you, you make this either group or phase dependent. And I can quickly, let's just use a phase here, right? So low rates you can set that up and in low rates I can say rate A and B I want so much and maybe that's a lot but just saying and then higher rates I don't want anything I just want to be able to do this on low rates for instance this is just an FYI so I'm a low rate but notice that at this point in time, that's not going to work, right? If I move my ailerons now, you'll notice no flap movement. You got to remember to hit this active button to do that. So now you can see that, ooh, and those <laughs> flaps are moving the wrong direction. So obviously not what you wanted. And the way to fix that, 
is to change this the other way. And so now when I move my, you will see that my flaps move in the same direction. Now, you'll notice they don't move the same amount and that might be okay for you. Or you can put them at a full negative 100 and of course they'll then move at exactly the same amount and, and in essence give you a full aileron surface. You can move, make a move. Actually, let me show you that. A little operator error here. Okay. Anyway, so now if you look at the insert, you'll see that the flaps are moving perfectly in sync with my ailerons. And so I have nice large aileron. Okay. So that's just uh, another little tip, another little add on for you to, to look at. Okay, moving on to the next topic on the list, and that is timers. Another one that I get a lot of questions on, and I'm just going to go through two basic setups for, for timers. The rest would become fairly obvious as you move along. The reason you want to use timers on something that has telemetry is that maybe you bought a bind and fly and it doesn't have an EC that measures capacity, etc. You don't have room to add a uh, electric fly unit in there to put extra sensors in there. So the best option then for you is to time your flight. And that's what we've been using for many years, flying planes. We're gonna go in and say, add a timer by hitting the plus button. And it really doesn't matter which one you select to start with, because you can change them easily by going to type, right? And you can do that again. So start stop is what I'm gonna use here, timer. And then we just go straight into details because that is where all the goodies are that we need to change. First thing I do when I get into timers is say power on init. What that means is that when you turn on the radio or load your model, it resets your timer automatically. So whatever value you set as a pre or preloaded, it will automatically load that in here and you'll see that here in a second. So what I mean by that is we go into set time. Here is where you say, I want to set a timer for seven minutes because that is how much time I typically can get safely out of my battery, right? And this is the important part, safely. You don't want that battery pack to be so hot that you can barely touch it when it's done. So it's run down all the way to, uh, you know, 3.2 volts per cell. That's not good. You really want to uh, have a little bit of a buffer there. So we choose whatever that value for you is. We put it in the set time. So now when I load my model, my start time, a set time will go into runtime automatically. The other way to do that is to have a reset button or switch that allows you to do that. And I use DT8. That's the one on the top right side, those little two little buttons on the top there, the right by switch eight for me on my radio. And it's a little digital trim button, if you like. And that's what DTH stands for. And that allows you to reset your timer anytime. And of course, that'll also then load your runtime up with your set time. So uh, that's the first thing you want to do. The next is you want to choose what are you going to use for start and stop. Now, a lot of people use a switch and I'm included. And the reason I do it that way is I use that. Remember, we talk, just talked about a uh, throttle cut switch. I use that same switch to start and stop my, my timer because that tells me I am ready to fly and I'm done flying. That, that's my two things on that switch. And for me, that works great. So having said that, I'm going to go to start, hit that switch eight and say, there we go. And on stop, move that switch eight back to the off position again. And so now I have switch eight set on. And when I toggle it, you'll see my counter start counting as soon as I hit that. And when I turn it, turn the motor off, then the counter stops. Great. And of course, I can then just reset and I'm back to my counter. So that's the basic setup of the timer. Now you're going to say, well, I want to measure it when I actually use power. And the way you do that is to measure when your motor is on, right? You operate your throttle and your motor is running. So how do I go about that? Um, it is a little bit more complicated and uh, I'm going to show you why that is. First off, you have to go and set where you want that trigger point to be on your throttle to be on and off. And to do that, we go out of the timer menu and we go into the switch set menu. 
that'll bring up this menu showing you all kinds of stuff. I'm going to tap on stick one and you will see uh, it brought this up and ST1 stick one. That's my throttle. If you have a different stick, that's your throttle. Make sure you pick the right one. You will see a number of things here. What the interesting one is, the one that you want to look at is the one that's in the negative side because that's the low. And you want to adjust that to where you want that position to be for you to start and stop. It might be low or you might want to say, well, actually, whoops, let's try that again. Or you might want to say, well, actually, I want to be above neutral. That's where I really want to measure because that's when I'm humming. I'm obviously I'm not going to go there. Let's be a little bit. We'll split the difference and say 50 is where I want my switch position to be on. OK, and uh, that's all there is to it. I hit the check mark. OK, and now uh, and you 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 can't see it in here, but I'll show you where it is, where you can see that. If we're going to go back to the timer set, and I just got to turn that beeping off for a second here, go back into detail, and we're going to hit the start switch. Well, first we're going to delete the old one that we had, obviously, and now I'm going to operate my throttle. All right. And here I want to hit that top one because that's where my position is that I want to say is remember I said 50% is where that switches on for me. If you go above that, that's where it turns on. Then uh, say OK. And you do the same for the other one. Oh, press delete, hit. Okay. Except we have to do the, the opposite position as the on, right? Because that's where I want that position to be. All right. So, okay. And now you can see that I have, and they, they're they independent because remember we had those two positions that you saw in that uh, switch set menu. You can set those two positions differently. And that's where my start goes on and that's where it goes off. So you can actually have two different positions that says on and off, which is great. That's what most people would want when they operate their motors. And uh, there we go. So now I have stick one configured to start at a custom position that I set up and to stop at a custom position that I set up. And that's it on timers. Nope, eh, not true. <laughs> Pre-time. Pre-time is the ability to say, give me a heads up. All right, I, I set my seven minutes up. That's my drop dead time. I got to land by that time. So when you get that 10, nine, eight thing, you got 10 seconds to land and that's maybe not good. So maybe you want a 30 second heads up time. And so you just go in here and okay. So now at 30 seconds, I'm going to get a notification. And if I click in this pre alarm box, you can choose what it is. How do you want to get your uh, pre alarm? You can say voice and you can turn that on and off or a beep. You can ha have it repeat for you at intervals and you can adjust that. So obviously you don't want to make it more than your pre alarm time because that will be bad, but maybe 10 seconds would be good for you. And then the countdown is still on. So I'll get my 10, 9, 8, 7. And there we go. So now I have a heads up to say, hey, you got to come in. Of course, if you are, uh, you tend to fly far away, then maybe you want this to be a little bit higher and you adjust it accordingly. That is it for timers. Moving on to the next topic on my list, and it'll be the last topic in this video. We're going to talk about control notices or control notice notifications. Notifications is typically associated with telemetry and switches, stuff that's on the radio and stuff that comes back from your model. So uh, I'm going to go through each and every one of these, not in detail, but in enough that should give you a really good indication of how to use them and the value that they bring to the radio. Um, so the very first one, the telemetry option is really the same as the little circle hard button on the right side of your radio or the telemetry option from the main page. And that is a way for you to go and communicate with 
your receiver and or whatever else you have connected to as you might have a general electric module installed or a GPS module, module or the ESC is typical, right? Um, so this is a, another way of getting to those, just another entry to allow you to get to it. Uh, system notice, this is basic things that has to do with the radio itself that allow you to set up notifications when things happen or need your attention. So uh, there's a whole bunch of them set up by default that allow you uh, or notif notify you as soon as they go on. First is battery capacity. If it's under 20%, it's going to do a notify you. And you can actually play. Battery, 82%. It'll let you know what your, uh, your capacity is. And uh, you can actually s assign these things to switches. I'll show you that in a little bit just to play it on demand. Uh, of course, RF strength, you know what that is. Um, trainer signal, since we can use Wi-Fi or wireless connection between two radios to do trainer, the trainer signal setup. Um, if you're too far apart, the two, the pupil and the, uh, and the tutor is too far apart, then uh, it'll let you know that you guys need to get closer to each other. Um, control sleep time is 30 minutes. So in other words, if you don't operate the radio in 30 minutes, it'll turn itself off, it'll start turning itself off. It will alert you before it does that. Transmitter, power, off. And there we go. And it'll actually do it a couple of times before it turns off. So it doesn't just turn off right away. Um, that's good. Then you have the ability to say, alert me when my throttle position is not at minimum when I turn my radio on. So the radio will check your uh, throttle and say, hey, it is not all the way down, maybe you and so it'll pop up at uh, a model load or a radio startup. And then uh, you can select to have throttle cut enabled by default when you load up the radio, start up the radio or, uh, or load a new model. I got it turned off at the moment, but that's not a bad thing to have. In other words, it'll for enforce that motor cut off that we talked about earlier. Start phase. Auto rotation, um, same thing applies to that. Start phase normal, again, same thing applied to that. And then finally, um, but I think probably the most important for me on this list is something that says, when I turn my radio on, check all the switches. Um, please note this does not include sliders and knobs, only switches. Check all the switches. If they are not in the position that I have stored just now, then alert me, all right? And you can turn that on. Of course, it wasn't turned on there right now. There we go. And so now when I turn my radio on, it'll check all the switches. And if they are not in the position that I just stored, it'll tell me, hey, and it won't turn on your RF automatically if you selected RF to come on automatically until you rectify your switch controls properly. So very handy to have, especially on quads with all kinds of phases that you have set up. You don't want it to just take off automatically or stuff like that. So make sure you store those positions for the startup for your uh, model. And this is model dependent. So you come in here and save it for each and every model that you create. All right, so that's system notice. Next, we have user notice. And this is really the one that we're gonna do most of your work on. This is where you set up all your custom telemetry options that you might have. If you have a um, ESC with telemetry, you can come in here and set up capacity notifications. If you have a model that has GPS, for instance, you can set up all kinds of interesting things in your um, as far as ceiling goes etc notify that you close to 400 foot in the US stuff like that so you can come in here and set up a specific notification you'll see that we have receiver battery voltage so by default I get the telemetry from by the receiver all receivers have this built in by default it all it knows what the, the battery voltage is or the input voltage into the receiver is. Then you have RF strength and then temperature also built into the receiver. You have a temperature 
sensor and you can see those and that'll alert based on those settings and you can come in here and change those settings for it sensor notice this is additional sensors notices that goes on top of and they're a little bit more customized so the general air model or electric module for instance may have these characters or symbols built into the signal coming back from it and uh, you can activate those and read them and, and set up your your notification when that is triggered on that module so you actually have a module that has this built in and it'll come back and, and notify you control notice now this one is really cool and that you can set up a uh, voice to to work with any of the switches that you have on here i have played around with this one a little bit and i wish i could figure out a way to do just one of them in here not two but currently what i've done here is i've set up a control trigger and i'll show you how to do that in just a minute and then set up two two voice controls here as soon as my uh, throttle moves past 50 percent i'm actually you'll hear that beep and if I move it back down below 50% you'll hear that different beep or you can put in any notification in there that you want but it's just so that you know that I've crossed that 50% mark on my throttle and that is super important for our heli guys that want to know that I you know that I cross that zero pitch mark on my my heli uh, i like to do that anyway uh, some other people but unfortunately like i said you got to do two of these i haven't figured out a way to have just one entry that'll trigger those beeps but it allows me to have two different um, tones going up or down so that's cool all right it's easy to add another one just click on the number column hit the plus and hit control decide on the switch you want to use in this case i'm going to use switch three here and uh, basically you can use that to activate for anything in this case for instance uh, we just talked about trainer pupil so I can just say who has got control and that switch will let me do that so uh, oh, there we go Toronto, all right and there we go so I've assigned that so next time teacher. if I toggle that switch and I take control then I know I am the one that has the radio control over the model and if I go the other way I could actually set up another notification that says it is now back to the pupil. Easy ways just to set up little voice controls on switches so that you uh, get a notification of what it is that you operated. I like to do that like I said I do that for, for gears for ignition all these kind of things. Unfortunately not all of them have voice in them so you have to make your own custom voice and load it into the radio maybe that's something else i need to have a video on currently don't have uh, anything that i can show you but i'll think about making something for that so that's control notice voice notice is a little bit more tricky and what you do here is you can set up remember i just said you can uh, set up a switch so that you can get a trigger um, you can trigger notifications to know how much voltage my battery capacity is for my for my radio or what is the timer on my timer one or timer two or timer three and you can set them all up here and then you can just sign a switch and when you toggle that switch so you can set up a trigger and in this case it's switch six and you can say once i trigger this keep on repeating it and have this much delay between them so uh, i can say repeat on another switch Right. And now I can say, wait, wait a few seconds between, and now it'll wait that few seconds that you said. Yeah, so I'm going to turn that off. So that's one way of doing it. You can just auto repeat on that, and I'm going to take that off now because I really don't want that to come up. So once you put that switch in that position, it'll keep on playing until such time with this delay that you specified until you take that switch out of the position. Or you can just use a trigger. And so when I do this trigger, if I flip it, Four minutes, it'll play in rotating fashion all 
the ones that you have here. So, and so you can see it just toggles between the two that I have configured. And if you have more configured, it'll keep on toggling between them. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can have a specific switch setup that'll trigger just that specific one. All right. So now, if I operate DT5, that digital trim, it'll tell me what my battery capacity is. And really, you want to do that on your timer as well if you want. But you have options that you can choose here how you want to get information out of your radio on request so that you know how much capacity you're using in your radio or on capacity of the model if you have a ESC or a electric module installed. Those kind of things. You can set them up here, trigger it, and you'll get that notification right back to you and you'll know what it is. Very, very handy to have. Moving on, remember I said I'll show you how to do the control switch. So that throttle notification that I did, you come in here and you just hit the plus and operate the control switch that you want to use. In this case, I used throttle to do that. So I'm going to delete that and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, of course, then I renamed it. And then you come here and you set up your trigger point because you want to know what, what's going to trigger your, uh, at what point on the stick movement do you want that to trigger. Right. So in my case, I set it to zero and you can of course change that to anything else, but that'll kind of defeat the purpose of what I have here. I, I want it, oops, want it that zero point. So now I have a control switch defined and that's all it is. This is a, a switch on the radio and then go back to my control notice. You can see I use that C1, that control that I switch that I defined to trigger this event. So you will get that. There's a something else maybe that I can quickly talk about while we're in control notice. You can actually, and this is really neat, and I, I forgot about this. If you go here, you can say choose uh, try that again. On off. Now if I use that switch three that I defined earlier. You now notice that I can do that in that with this one line, just say my teacher control is on. Teacher, on. And so it plays on and off. It adds, adds that automatically to whatever the wave is that's playing here. Teacher, off. So on and off. And you have a few other options here. You can say, play me the value or use a position or of course nothing, which is the original one that by default's on. So uh, you have some options on your controls to, to play you certain things. Very neat. All right, so that is control switches. I'm not gonna go into logical digital compu switches. That is more advanced stuff. Basically, it is setting up uh, with logic logical switches combined two, two conditions to come up with a, a third condition. Uh, very neat. Um, you can actually do all kinds of logic conditions and switch if this, then that kind of thing, if you're familiar with that. Only two conditions, though. You can't do more than two two things that you can look into. Um, sensor switches. Remember I just talked about like the GPS inputs, if you have that, you can actually have the GPS trigger a switch when it reads a, reach a certain thing. So if I am a mile away from myself and I reach that distance away from me, trigger the switch and then you can use that switch to trigger a phase which is return home and it will automatically come back to you. So you can use sensor switches here and set up sensor switches that way. And uh, of course, Vario Tone, if you have a cell plane and you have a Vario in it, you can come in here and set that rising and, and, and falling tones up in here to your uh, to your specification so you know what that sounds like. That's all I'm gonna go into on, on the special tab here. Hopefully this video has been very helpful to you. Please like, subscribe, get back to me. Thank you.